Katie Ayrton came to the South Carolina House of Representatives with a lot of promises that she kept in her first year in office. In this special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, I speak exclusively with her one-on-one. -on -one. Representative Ayrton. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing just great. Awesome. Well, let me take you back to May 10th. The following headline in the Post Inquiry reads this quote, it's official, South Carolina has a new gas tax yes. at the South Carolina House and Senate overrid Governor McMaster's veto. If you want to go back and edit that headline, what would you add to that? The people have spoken. <laughs> um, I appreciate that the governor has a stance. Um, I think it's misguided. I think that we needed to be leaders, not politicians. Not worry about getting elected in two years from now. Worry about getting the right things done for South Carolina today. And I think he missed the boat on that. And as a matter of fact, you said this on your Facebook page on May 9th, quote, promises made promises kept. Mm -hmm. Last year when running for office, I promised to find and support sustainable solutions to fixing our roads, reforming DOT, and providing more accountability for the people. While the final bill is not everything I wanted it, it was, does provide sustainable solutions to the aforementioned issues. And as such, I earned my support with its final vote today. Yes. What was it? What else did you, did you want to add to that particular bill if you had a chance so, to go back and vote for it? If I, if, if I could have my way, and, and I, wow, okay, so the one thing I wouldn't have put in it is tuition. I think that when the Senate came on board, um, the House version went over. It was germane in what I think germane. It only had to do if you were using a car, filling it up with gas, using the roads. It didn't do any convoluted tax credits or tuition credits, because I think that money's the water. Okay. And that gives the, that's what makes people distrust politicians when we don't stick to the game plan. But compromise is something that every leader needs to do. You can't have it all your way every single time. So that was, a, a, I would say, a concession made by the House to get the senators to actually move and do something. Um, I think that this year, especially, it's been three years in, in planning, the people that say that there isn't transparency, they're not reading the entire bill and understanding what the intent is. We're moving away from the SIBs, um, and we're, we're restructuring, there's reform in there. We have put in the component piece that anybody who's doing work in this resurfacing projects, and basically the asphalts, um, it, the, the maintenance of the roads, um, concrete, asphalt, any of that, mm -hmm. all of those contracts will be publicly put out there on this website. There will be the dollar figure of the contracts and the contractor names. How much more transparency can I give? If you understand what we're doing, who we're letting the contracts to, and how much money we're spending on them. The second part to that is ethics. That's a big thing for me. Right now in the state of South Carolina, for any of us on the General Assembly, we need to fill out forms of economic interest. If you look at those, it's very clear where our money is, who's paying us, and it's, it's right there. So any questions of ethical violations, we have done our best to mitigate them in this bill. If you serve on the commission, you can't be associated immediate family with any of the contractors for a year after you serve. Um, us legislators, it's a statement of economic interest. So I, we've done our part in that. Um, the people that are complaining, I hear them. You know, I was the single mom. I had two kids. I had to choose between power and food. I've been there. But I can also say that getting to work was more important to me and getting my hourly rate than the two cents I'm going to pay per gallon for a fill up. That flat tire that keeps me from getting to work on time was more critical than the two cents. We need to get our roads right. I think a big misconception is what is a road in the state of South Carolina? You have municipalities that are in charge of roads. You have the state that's in charge of roads. People get that convoluted and it's not their fault we as politicians and the bureaucracy have made it really challenging for people. We need to get that cleaned up and that's something I am dedicated to do. This is a first step in a process, but I need to get the money in to start the process. Let me take you to WBTW.com because they talked to you right after the, the governor's veto mm -hmm. of gas tax and you said this quote, excuse me governor, but you're wrong. You're not listening to the people, you're governing. And you might want to think about a new job very quickly. Mm -hmm. Two questions. <laughs> I don't mean to keep beating up for it. Oh, I know. <laughs> no. He's a nice yeah, man. It's yeah. just, this is a particular issue 
that when you have bipartisan support sure. on anything, sure. up in D.C. or down in Columbia, you have to understand, it's loud and clear. And when you have, I believe it was 97 House members and 32 senators all voted for it, we are all in jeopardy of not having our jobs again because of that. Understand, we're doing it because, although people may say they don't want, they don't understand the tax, and I get that, we need this. Act 388 in our state, 4% on residential, 6% on commercial. But the reality on the property tax, in the reality, when you do the rebate, because the state puts in a rebate to that, we're only getting about 2.5% from residential. Bulk shares from commercial. We need their tax dollars into the state. We need that revenue. Boeing, Michelin, Sunoco aren't going to continue to invest in our state if they're losing money riding on them. So it was, we need that tax base to give back to the taxpayers what they need in the services they require. But there's got to be a little give. I mean, they're willing to invest in, and do work here because we have all of the things that make this state great. We have the people, we have the pride, we have the innovation, we have the fortitude to see through challenges. They want to work with us. All we need to do is assure that they can move. Let me ask you this question. You are out and about in Somerville and the rest of Dorchester County. What are people telling you about the South Carolina General Assembly right now, as far as job performance, as far as getting things done? Well, they're a little upset this session, and I don't blame it. It's a lot to take in. We have the, tap, the pension. Right. Uh, but in doing, doing that, we are, you know, the General Assembly is basically, if you take it and you break it down into the, the commercial world, they're the board of directors for a company, and the governor is CEO. Right. Our employees are the state employees, and we owe them. Our first responders, our police officers, our teachers, the people that maintain the lawns, right. they're all respected members of our community, and the pension system is something that if you want those services to continue, you have to have the system that you promised your employees. This South Carolina is no Enron. We will do it right. It's gonna hurt a little bit because markets changed, um, you know, what was done in the past, I have no, no hold on, but I think everybody in the nation felt 2008, 2007. The pension plan in South Carolina felt it. Um, this is what we're trying to take care of this year. It's a step. There'll be more to be done, without a doubt. But the pension plan was, was critical, and that is, you know, we're raising taxes on that. Then you look at the roads. I mean, it wasn't, if, if I was sitting out, I'd be question, shaking my head, but I really am a thoughtful, thoughtful, I will say public servant, not politician. Oh. I read through countless amounts of budget strategies. I, I looked at the legislative audit of the Department of Transportation. Right. Um, I sat in on the pension committee session, joint sessions. I went to every ways and means meeting that I could possibly physically attend to get educated. And I can promise you this, I'm a taxpayer just like you. My husband owns a small business that depends on trucks on the road. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel this tax more than most people because our, our, our company is run by trucks, right. which fill up with gas. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay because it's necessary and needed. And we have to remember, nothing in life is free. Nothing. We have to have an ownership vested stake in it. Or otherwise, why would you care? You have to give people that, empower people to get back what is theirs. And I think that the infrastructure in this state is something that is, is it's a pride thing for us, but moreover, it gets those EMS workers or, or servers, or the, I'm sorry, I used the wrong words, but the, the first responders to the scene of the, the accident quicker. It gets your kids to school on time. It gets you to work on time. It allows you to make time on your weekend where you can actually go and do things without sitting in traffic for two hours because there's potholes, and the road construction is there, and the accident scene. That's what that two cents is for. It's not the line of pockets of a bureaucrat. It's to give you back what you rightfully deserve. Let me go back to May 9th, to that Facebook page. Yes! <laughs> promises made, promises kept. Obviously, a lot of lawmakers in South Carolina that I talked to didn't get a lot of their bills passed. If you, when you go back to South Carolina, the General Assembly of Columbia next year, what promises do you want to give to the people? So I made one that I kept this year. 
which was to make, well, there were several, but roads. I mean, I went in Somerville, my, I told everyone, yes. the gas tax is, is the only way I can see out of this, and it really was. Um, the second piece is I dropped a constitutional amendment, so it came out as a joint resolution, okay. to limit the terms on how long any member of the General Assembly, House or Senate, can serve as chair of the committee, and why I did that. If you're doing well for your district, and hopefully my district will bring me back, okay. it's not that that gives the power. The elephant in the room, Senator Leatherman, didn't get to where he was by his district. It was the power that the Senate gave him by letting him be the chairs again and again and again. We have to limit that. We have to say, if, you know, if you're a House member, you should only chair a committee for a particular amount of years, and the Senate the same thing. If you can't get your work done in that time frame, it's time to step aside and let someone else. Maybe your viewpoint, maybe your, your problem solving isn't what we need. We need to let other voices be heard other than one or two in the state, repeatedly, year after year, decade after decade. So that was my, my other promise. I made it, I dropped that bill, and it will be uh, dealt with in committee in January, judiciary. And, you know, obviously you're one of the freshmen in mm -hmm. the South Carolina General Assembly with Lynn Bennett, Sandy Senate, all those folks. Tell me this, is it everything that lives up to your expectation? Wow. More. Wow. <laughs> I'm one of those people where it, this is my calling. I love it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a job. It's, I liken it to being a pastor, a minister. It really is doing the people's work and, and trying to do the right thing for the, for the populace. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's everything. It's, it's way more than I expected. Um, I will say that the personal attacks on social media um, were something I had to get used to. Um, but understanding people are frustrated, and I, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate frustration because for too long, politicians haven't been public servants, and they have forgotten to educate those who elected them into office. And that's one thing I've tried really hard to do. If I vote on something, I try and get the full span of why I did it. And open to any solutions anybody has to possible um, problems that you know we may not see. And that, that's part of the job. And my, my job is not to be the opinion. My job is to be the voice. I listen, I research, I educate, and then I, I provide legislation. That's my job. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. It's a different view. Oh, absolutely. Well, Representative Katie Arrington, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. <laughs> no problem. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Anytime. Okay. Yes, ma'am.